So I was at NASA and Lomax and the rest of NASA wanted models that would work for unstructured grids, just like in Flow 360. Baldwin tried a one equation model, which everybody said would never work. And Lomax asked me to look into it. And my thought was that it's simple enough, you should be able to start it from scratch. So I generated a model, a one equation model from scratch. Uh, it's unique features, are, so it's a little simpler. Mostly it's the only one people can converge to machine zero. So it's numerically much more friendly than the other models. My thought is that it's not successful yet. And people get a lot of papers published, but no uh, general model has come out that you could put into from 3D or Flow 360. Uh, and again, I'm trying hard to learn the language of uh, machine learning and I haven't succeeded yet. I was never in academia. I was raising children almost by myself. It's too complicated a life. So I had simple lives at NASA and then Boeing. Oh, flex compute compared with NASA and Boeing is everything moves much faster. The team is very tight, uh, which was not the case. Uh, we don't, flex compute doesn't have silos or rivalry. So first, if you compare models, traditional turbulence models with more or less fewer equations, more equations hardly pay off. Uh, at flex compute, what we're doing more and more is giving the option of traditional modeling or treating the turbulence with unsteady simulation that resolve, at least in some regions, the three-dimensional unsteady turbulence like DES. I think that's very good and it's, it's a way of the future. By now, I think the best teams uh, are doing adaptation for steady flows, even for very complex geometries like the high lift configuration very well. I think that problem is essentially solved. For unsteady, I think it's a challenge of the 2020s and I've started work uh, to, uh, to do that. So again, these turbulence resolving simulations, I want a grid that is fixed in time, but that we adapted based on what we've learned uh, from the early part of the simulation. As I said, Flex Compute is offering both. Unsteady simulations, of course, will give you vibration and noise. But even for the steady part of the flow, so the average uh, lift and drag of the airplane, uh, they will, for massively separating, separated flows, they will give you better answers than steady modeling. Well, we can uh, do these on steady simulations. And uh, then, for instance, for uh, driver noise in a car, uh, these on steady simulations will give you the pressure fluctuations on the driver's window and then you can calculate the noise that is transmitted. Um, but uh, in 2004, with my Russian team, we simulated vortex generators that we put in front of the windshield of a 737. Um, so we didn't do unsteady simulations, but we could tell that the separation would be reduced at the base of the windshield, and it should make less noise. And we had one flight test, and it came back and said, yes, we have a little less, less noise. And next time we go to the airport, you can see our VGs on the 737. Well, I think fluid mechanics and improvements in design can reduce the drag and the fuel burn uh, some. I don't think long range airplanes will ever be electric. So I think in the long range, uh, we'll probably uh, fly with kerosene substitutes uh, that are, are green and just pay more for fuel. And so what we're doing is uh, bringing more accuracy and more efficient engineering uh, towards uh, reduction in the energy use. Well, my goals are to bring some of the knowledge I have of turbulence and acoustics in into the company so that we can go and really have quantitative uh, predictions, uh, which is going to be very difficult for noise because to certify the airplane, often the one or two decibel difference makes a big, uh, you know, means that you pass or you fail. Uh, and uh, the cars also want to be quiet and air taxis. I want to predict everything about the airplane, not just, right now we do a good job on the cruise lift and drag, uh, but I want to do the high lift, the approach speed, and all the unsteady components are the same for cars. Well, of course, going to CAD uh, and files and uh, so a much better description of the geometry uh, has been interesting. Uh, Boeing is very good at optimizing the cruise wing, uh, especially with the Tranair code. And uh, 
uh, minimize the drag while not costing too much in structural weight and not constraining the skin thickness because of curvature. So they have very many things uh, that the CFD is uh, doing. And this is a quote from the 18th that is still designing the clean wing of the Boeing airplane. I'd like to go to the same thing for the high lift where the fluid mechanics is much more difficult. The flaps have much more uh, potential uh, elastic deformation. And uh, we need to predict the stall speed and the approach speed within two knots.